the ideal free agent for every eliminated NBA playoff team. Before we start, I would like you to hit that red subscribe button so you never miss out on any of our videos. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Sportstastic. Here are the ideal free agents for every eliminated NBA playoff team. Number 1, Boston Celtics, Namaija Bajinka. The Celtics have already undergone major overhaul after a disappointing season, moving Brad Stevens into the front office and saying goodbye to longtime executive Danny Ainge. Stevens now has to search for his replacement, and it appears he'll be trying to find a trade partner for Kimber Walker as well. But while all those aforementioned moves are meaningful, they do not feel like rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. At the most basic level, Boston struggled last season because it lacked an NBA rotation. So adding some of those in free agency should be a high priority this summer. As a team without much cap space, the Celtics have been incredibly judicious about who they pursue this summer, but Namija Bajinka seems like a good place to start. This is the same team that just played Daniel Theis and Tristan Thompson together in 30 games, so they clearly need front court spacing, and the Serbian provides that. Hero is in. And none remains in the game. That's a long shot, which is way off. Number two, Charlotte Hornets, Richon Holmes. With Lanelle Low Ball, Cherry Rozier, and Devontae Graham set at guard, and Gordon Hayward, Miles Bridges, and PJ Washington manning the forward spots, you have to imagine the Hornets will focus on acquiring the center this offseason. And while they're hoping for a few lucky bounces and USC's Evan Mobley, the odds of that occurring are long, so focusing on the free agent market is a much more sound strategy. Though he's coming off a career year, and both players and teams have said the right things, Richon Holmes' future in Sacramento seems tenuous. Per James Hamm of the NBC Sports Bay Area, the big man is requesting a contract on four years and $80 million. Those particular terms might be an overpay, but even a slightly smaller deal would put the Kings over the cap. Seeing as how Sacramento is not close to contention, paying the luxury tax next year would be a major unforced error, so Holmes' departure, unfortunately for Kings fans, seems likely. Lead and gets it done as Halliburton sets up Holmes. Holmes tries to pull his way in, stops, finds Halliburton. Great fake as DeRozan goes. Number three, Dallas Mavericks, Tim Hardaway Jr. As Mavericks first round series with the Clippers went down, Luka Doncic's supporting cast, most notably Kristaps Porzingis, largely failed him. However, if anybody besides Luka deserves praise for their performance against LA, it should be Tim Hardaway Jr. Is Hardaway a perfect player? No. He wasn't even very good defensively against the Clippers, getting absolutely smoked by their various talented scorers. But the shooting guard was able to stay on the court because he lived up to the positional description and shot the lights out. The Michigan alum hoisted more threes than anybody on either team besides Donich and actually increased his efficiency from beyond the arc, making 40.4% from distance in the seven game series against the 39.1% showing in the 2020-2021 campaign. As Hardaway knocks down the jumper, but so much of that credit goes. They'll need Tim Hardaway's offense as well. Finds Kleba. Kleba has really struggled from three. Number four, Denver Nuggets, Alec Burks. Chalking up the Nuggets sweep at the hands of the Phoenix Suns to injuries and general exhaustion from an extra short offseason is reasonable. But that's not an excuse for GM Tim Connolly to maintain the status quo, though. We saw throughout the Western Conference semifinals just how many few players on Denver's roster were capable of generating offense beyond Nikolai Jokic and occasionally Michael Porter Jr. And even Jamal Murray's eventual return next spring won't solve that gaping hole entirely. The Nuggets starting lineup shouldn't be altered, but they do need to upgrade their bench guard spots. With Murray and Will Barton out for the next first two games of the Conference semifinals, rookie Facundo Campanzo and newly acquired Austin Rivers were slotted into the starting lineup, and that is unacceptable for a playoff matchup. Alex Burks, on the other hand, feels a little more respectable. After injuries derailed the first few years of his career, the off-guard has found his niche as a second-unit gunner, recently posting a career-best effective field goal percentage for the upstart Knicks and posting their best playoffs net rating swing among rotation players by a country mile. Nate, way too small, and then at the rim here. Alec left to right. Oh, what a killer crossover. Up and in. Number five, Golden State Warriors, Trevor Ariza. Steph Curry's last two months were undeniably thrilling, but the fact that the heroics failed to result in a playoff berth underscoring the ticking clock on Golden State's window to win is fourth title of its decade. Klay Thompson's return will be emotional and exciting, but his form is very much in question. While players like Andrew Wiggins and James Wiseman's aren't centerpieces of a contender, unless the Warriors luck into a top five pick, the future is murky, so they should commit to making the most of their future Hall of Famers remaining prime years. Golden State's young role players impressed over the last weeks of the regular season, but to maximize its chances of title contention, the franchise should pursue battle-tested veterans this offseason. 
Despite taking nearly a year off from NBA basketball, the 35-year-old was third on the Heat in net rating this season, while guarding everybody from Dame Lillard to Miles Turner. Though not as spry as the Warriors' East Wild wing defenders, Ariza could approximate the Kevin Durant's and Andre Iguodala's of old while benefiting greatly from Curry and Thompson's offensive magnetism as well. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey, like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the next two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.